Auto crafting reinforced stone. So to set this up, first you just want to place a solid block on the bottom because scaffolds have to be placed on an opaque block. Then you want to build a tower of 10 blocks that you'll remove later, just so you can place formation and annihilation planes on the sides of it. You want to put 10 formation planes, and as you place them, set the priority on each one. So at the bottom we set it to 10, then 9, uh, all the way up to 1. That way our scaffolds place from bottom to top. And you also want to configure each one to have iron scaffolds whitelisted. You don't accidentally place anything else if you connect a cable incorrectly. Then on the other side, place 10 annihilation planes. On the back side, place 10 autonomous activators, each facing uh, towards the front here. Then on the top, place another autonomous activator facing downwards. And you want to place 10 advanced turtles. I prefer advanced. I think you can do it with a regular turtle, but I would go ahead and use advanced because they have a better interface. Um, let's place them in a vertical column here facing inwards. Then you need 10 computers. Again, I prefer the advanced ones. They have a nicer interface. But I think you can do this with the regular one. And they need to be facing this direction. Then you want to configure each of your turtles. So for the each of the turtles, you need to set the label. So you'll see here this one is labeled CF Turtle 9. Note the capitalization. It's important because it's used in the programming. So set the name on each one, right click on the turtle, and at the prompt type Lua to open up the Lua prompt. Then type os.setComputer label CF Turtle 1 through CF Turtle 10. So repeat this for each of the 10 turtles. And the one on the bottom needs to be labeled CF Turtle 10. This is the master that controls all of the others. And 1 through 9 are the slaves. So once you've labeled each one, you also need to equip each one with a wireless modem. So take a wireless modem, place it in the first slot here that has the border, border around it. That's the currently selected inventory slot. And then at the Lua prompt, type turtle.equipwrite. And when you do that, you'll see the modem show on the side of the turtle as currently equipped. Then for each of the slave turtles, number one through nine, um, open them up and at the root prompt, so if you're still at the lure prompt, just type exit. That'll take you back to the root prompt. Then type paste bin git. And this is case sensitive, this code here. So C4C06HKX startup. And that will save this pastebin code text as the program startup on this machine. And then once you've done that, type startup to begin running the program. Repeat that for each of the nine slave turtles. Then on the master turtle, CF turtle 10, you'll want to get this pastebin code. So RAJ0CBUM, again, it's case sensitive, startup, and that'll save that program as the startup then type startup to begin running that program. And then on each of the advanced computers that we have here for the redstone logic for the sand, just open up the computer and we don't need to do any naming or anything here, just paste bin git dzmrzznk, case sensitive, startup. That'll save startup and then type startup to begin running it. Repeat that for each of these 10. Then you'll need to do all the wiring. So. On the formation planes, we just have a subnet here with seven of the formation planes, bottom seven, connected to an import bus. It's importing iron scaffolds. I put acceleration cards, I don't think they're necessary, but why not? Uh, from an inventory here. And then the remaining three with this import bus that's configured exactly the same. This is because on a subnet you can only have eight channels without a controller, so we don't want to have to put a controller on each one of these subnets, so we split them apart. And then for the annihilation planes, we went ahead and created another subnet here. So this has eight annihilation planes on these chan on this normal cable here, going into a dense cable. The remaining two on a normal cable going into the same dense cable. 
and this subnet has more than eight channels on it, so we need an ME controller here. Those annihilation planes are depositing into this inventory here, which is just an ME drive with a single storage cell. You can just use a 1K storage cell, it's fine. That is configured in a cell workbench to only accept reinforced stone. So it's important that the only inventory that's on this subnet can only accept reinforced stone so that it does not destroy any other block types. Annihilation plane. And then that ME controller is also connected on that same subnet to an export bus. It's just exporting reinforced stone. Again, you probably don't need the acceleration cards, but I went ahead and included them. And that goes back into the main system. So you can put that into any um, inventory that connects back to your main system. Then for the autonomous activators for sand, each one of them is going to need power. And you can also connect that power to the uh, top one here with the sprayer. Each of the autonomous activators needs to be configured for first slot only. Right click, aim level center, and the right hand side and the back are set to normal inventories. This configuration setting here. And red stone control is for always. And they're facing this direction. The sides that are configured for normal inventories are this face and this face over here. So each one of these has a storage bus on it, configured for sand. That's on its each one of these is its own subnet. It's just a storage bus and a level emitter. Level emitter is configured for emit when levels are below limit for one sand. So whenever this autonomous activator does not have any sand in it, it emits a signal. That goes straight into the back side of this computer. That is important because the computer detects from its back face. And then over here on this side, we have export bus on each one, configured for sand, redstone card, not put acceleration cards in here because we only want to put one sand at a time and that'll make it put either part of a stack or a full stack. Uh, and these are set for one activate once per pulse with this redstone card. And again, we have a similar subnet set up here. So at the bottom seven, connected to the storage bus, set for sand, that pulls sand out of this inventory. And again up here, the remaining three, storage bus configured the same. So that covers the sand. Then our sprayer autonomous activator is set for right click. Uh, this will just have your sprayer that's automatically input. Uh, redstone control is set to high. And our configuration is just normal inventory on the top, the right side. The top is actually this face, and the right side. And then inputting into this, we have an item conduit inserting on this channel, also extracting on the same channel, always, an item filter set to, advanced item filter set to full CF sprayer because we need to look at the MVP data to make sure it's a full sprayer that we're extracting. And then this is just an ME interface that's connected to your main ME network that supplies all of your resources and it just has a full sprayer set in the configuration configuration here. So that's also where we're exporting our reinforced stone back into. That's why we have this set with a filter so it doesn't accidentally pull reinforced stone autonomous act. And then the main system is also connected to this inventory that we're pulling everything out of through this ME interface panel that just has the pattern for tin sand plus tin iron scaffolds processes in, in reinforced stone. That connects to your main network. And this is just an import bus looking for empty CF sprayers that's also connected to the network. A 
And then for the redstone control, the master turtle down here outputs a bundled cable signal with five different channels, blue, black, red, white, and orange. The blue line tells whenever the uh, formation planes are currently active. It's not used for anything, but you can use that to trigger something in your base if you like. Uh, black signal is whenever the annihilation planes are active. Again, not used for anything, but you can use it to trigger if you like. Uh, the red signal is in case it detects a block in your system that's not a standard block. It's not the um, reinforced foam, scaffold, or uh, the finished product. And I currently have that hooked up to a howler alarm that's configured for my fire alarm, so that if I get a block in there, like if the autonomous activators place a sand block for, on accident, it'll alert me. Then the white line turns on the sprayer. I'm using wireless transmitter just to send that redstone signal up here and connect to this autonomous activator, but you can wire that however you like. This is just a wireless sender and receiver set to channel 6. Both set to the same channel. Then the orange line connects over here to the bottom of this advanced computer. I just have an orange insulated wire running off the bundled cable. And this is a framed insulated wire with a red alloy wire on the bottom of this. You can also just use something, anything that uses the 16 channel uh, bundled cable. So for example, Ender IO's insulated redstone conduits work. And you just set this to output on orange here, output on white autonomous activator and then red black and blue whatever you like and once you have all that configured you should be all set so just to explain the process of how everything comes into the system give a little more detail and I've also tried to comment the commute computer craft code so if you um, you open up the code for any of these startup programs and look at it, you should be able to understand it if you have some Lua programming knowledge. But basically the main system imports from the pattern here. That goes into this diamond chest. So we'll have sand and iron scaffolds in here. This import bus will pull all the scaffolds into the formation planes, build a tower, then the turtles will detect, uh, so the master turtle down here is asking each of these turtles to report what block is currently in front of you. So the first turtle will respond that there's a scaffold in front of me, and the second all the way down to the ninth, and then it will compare those to its own inspection. And if they're all scaffolds, then it will send a redstone signal on the white line, which turns on the sprayer, and it'll spray the scaffolds which then turn into foam, and the master will again ask each of the turtles what block is in front of you. If they all report foam, then it will turn on the orange line, which tells this computer uh, to inspect. Am I receiving a redstone signal from this autonomous activator being empty? I am, and I'm also receiving a, the orange line here. Then output one redstone pulse to this export bus to put a sand in the activator. And it also has logic in there so that if this line is still on and this is emptied again because it's placed the sand but it hasn't progressed to the next stage yet, it will still not place another sand. And it also passes its redstone signal from the bottom to the next computer above it. And each of these will repeat that process, checking to see if they have a signal from the bottom and a signal from the side, and we've not already placed a sand, then put a sand in then all the blocks will have turned into uh, reinforced stone and the formation planes will automatically destroy them because they're always looking to destroy reinforced stone because our inventory up here is configured to only accept reinforced stone and they're always trying to destroy whatever block is in front and then that reinforced stone is exported back into this interface automatically deposits in our storage system our normal drives So that's all the logic, and I hope you guys find it useful. Um, you also need to automate the sprayer. So to do that, you'll need a fluid solid canning machine. 
which is set to fluid enrich. It has water pumped into it from any infinite water source. Sprayer just goes in the top left slot, an empty sprayer. CF powder goes in here. That'll produce, uh, it'll add a thousand millibuckets of foam to the sprayer. So we have an ME interface just right up next to the canning machine that has the pattern here. Input one empty sprayer and eight CF powder will create one full sprayer. And then we have a conduit on the bottom that ex always extracts items. And that just inputs right back into the interface that has the pattern. And this is just a fluid conduit that's always extracting water, always inputs water in the bottom of the That will automatically auto-craft from the empty sprayers that are exported here and give you full ones back into the interface that are ready to be pulled in as soon as the sprayer is out. That's it. Good luck, and you can post in the Reddit thread if you have any questions.